Hello. What say you? And welcome to a very sexual, isn't it? Sensual episode sixty nine. Uh huh. Although sixty nine is not sexual or sensual, it's just kind of grotesque. Really? That's your opinion on? Well, that? no, it's not grotesque, but it is kind of like. Why is that grotesque? It's not grotesque, but it's not sensual. There's nothing sensual about two people flipping around and just dropping on top of each other. Well, what's the official definition of sensual? Sensual? Yeah. You can look it up. I mean, Well, I, you tell me what your understanding of the word sensual, sensual is. Sensual? I don't know if I'm going to be able to define it so much as give you the, the feeling of it. Give me the feeling. Sensual, I think, is a, a relaxed, sexually charged atmosphere that feels slightly exotic. Right. And, uh, and, 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 and maybe is more about... Uh, Jeez, what the hell is sensual? I know what sensual is. I'm just saying like, I think sensual is an exotic feeling that is a precursor to sexual. Huh. All right. So give me a celebrity who you feel would create. Oh, just someone who has a sensual aura? Well, oh. We all know Prince, I guess. But I mean, like, you. Sure. Right. I mean, Prince, I guess. Would be- I, when I think of sensual, I think of Cinemax. Cinemax, so like like, red, like soft Ritchie diaries. Yes, like, yes. All right. Okay, all right. Yes, I very sensual. It. And I will tell you this: in my own life, there's no place for sensual. No, now, anyone I've ever come across that's been sensual or tried to act sensual, kind of or annoying. or that I've been involved with in any capacity whatsoever, right. from I mean, from long, long ago to now, I feel sensual is immediately corny. Oof. Well, what's give me some corny examples of sensual? Like, are you talking like flowers and like rose pe- trail of rose petals to the bed? Oh, that's horrible. That's I think that's that's corny romantic. I don't know if that's. I guess that's an attempt at sensual. Yeah, it's, romance is a good word to co- coincide with the chocolate. Yeah, that's romantic. Which I guess ro- definitely sensual is steeped in 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 in, in some sort of romance. I think. Right. So oh, ro- romantic, no exactly. No, I don't mind Rome being romantic in a way that's not corny, but I like know. flowers and chocolates. This and- is great. Give me an example of of romantic but not corny. Romantic but not corny. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> hey, I don't appreciate you putting me on the spot, man. Uh, uh, so rom- I'm just asking questions. Romantic pal. but not corny. Romantic but not corny. Okay. Right. Um. There's just some dead air we got going on here. Romantic but not corny. Well, if I'm going to give a, all right, I'm trying to think of an everyday example. Sure. Just like a little, little nice gesture. But if I'm, if I'm going to go like balls to the wall about it, yeah. The way that I was planning to to propose to my first girlfriend ever. Okay. I thought that was pretty romantic. Yeah, how's that? It's just not corny. You don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, I thought you knew. Well, yeah, but not everybody not listening it? at home might Have not, not know. mention it on here. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was 15. Sure. And I, well, that's a very romantic age. You're by figuring. 15, 16, I, was, I, was, I had my first love. Right. And uh, and I told this story, man. I, <laughs> I, 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 I finally went on a date with her for the first time. I was yeah. head over heels where we were friends for a year before that. And I, I just, remember. Yeah, I remember. That. I think you did talk about this on the show. You wrote the, the letter, right? Yeah, and I mailed it. That's romantic. And I, they postmarked it, sealed with the date, and it was a proposal letter to her. Right. And I was going to give her the day I proposed. That's right. So, it, like six, seven, ten, whatever years later, I was going to say this day, this this right. letter is postmarked from the day after our first date. Right. And it already says what I've been feeling this whole time. Where's that letter today? Well, that girl cheated on me a lot of times. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> uh, that letter, you know, I don't know what that letter is. Really? You it might be in a. a I might have thrown it out, or it might be in like. A box that I haven't opened in 15 years. I don't even know. There is a liberating one. I broke up uh, with my fiance, or when we broke up, I should say. Um, I had written her a long letter that was like it was like 10 pages typed, like a long letter. Oh, that's like a school. It's like a, like a like a like a like a college final. Yes, and and I I had put it aside, and I was like, you know what? We've been together a long time. What are the odds are that we're never going to talk to each other or really see each other again? Let me just put this aside for when the day comes that we do reconnect. Like we could either address some of the things in it or not, right? Cut to 15 years later. We never reconnected. I think we've only spoken like twice since that day. Um, I found the letter. Not We should read about, both of our letters on here. Well, I can't. I can't read mine About <laughs> two years ago, I found it and I, I didn't even open the envelope. I just shredded it. Ah. And I was like, "Fuck I mean, it." Why? Yeah. What, what's there's no, there's nothing to it. Yeah. I'm sure it would embarrass me to read it. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I probably only have 
if I have one, as a matter of course, just because I socked it away and never even looked at it again. Right. It's not like I'm harboring it right. for any reason or anything. Yeah. But uh, it's what – so apologies if I said this on here, but the funny outcome about mine, yeah. which is – which I, I might be able to get some material out of this, is that – a few years later, after we broke up, and she was dating someone, might have even been the person, one of the people she cheated on me with, there was a website, and I don't know if it still exists, but it's pretty popular, a daily website. I think it was called Daily Candy. Daily Candy. You may talk, I'll look it up. And they had uh, a contest, a write-in contest, for uh, to write in about the most romantic proposal stories. Okay. And she wrote in using because I ended up telling her about this she, you know, when we broke up. She she wrote in using the story as fact, as if it happened between us. Really? And I followed through with it. And she won. And she won a five thousand dollar shopping spree. Holy shit. And then she she wrote me or called me, I don't uh, remember which one, and said, Hey, listen. You want half she, this? Yes. She was like, okay. she was all happy. She was right. like, because we were friendly still. Right. We were, we were totally friendly, but like, she was like, Oh, you're never going to guess what? The, that way you were going to propose to me. I let them know about it and we won. It's $5,000. And I just feel like maybe I should give you half of it, blah, blah. And I just was like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, keep, I wasn't like, I wasn't like F, F you, but I was like, I don't want half your five. That that didn't happen. You cheated on me and we broke up. That's a rookie mistake. I was mistake like, why don't you write an addendum though. to that? You forfeit the money. I didn't want the money. I think it was at a certain. I think it was on a certain website. Like it wasn't even like just a free five. That it wasn't like we. She was giving me twenty five hundred dollars cash. It right. was like to a certain website that I have probably had no interest in. Otherwise, I probably would have said something. But I still think it's nice for that she called and was like, "Hey, man, take yeah, some." Yeah, but cash. she. I know, but the whole the whole premise was that she. <laughs> she's a complete liar she cheated on me and dumped me and then we broke up and didn't get married and then she took what i did for real that had real emotion and heart and and, and romance uh sensuality connected to it and she lied about it to to, to for gain for profit and, and, and to get the accolades of, of of being the person who lived out the most romantic thing, when in fact she didn't. The truth was a was a, yeah, was a horror. She should have submitted <laughs> to a horror contest. <laughs> but you turning down that money uh, didn't change anything. It just put made you poorer. Like take the money, man. Get something out of this. No, but I didn't want to. That was dirty money. Yeah. It was dirty money. I didn't All want money's it. dirty money though. No. Yeah, I, I, I look. And you know what? I was young when she told me. Yeah, this yeah. is long. This is long ago. My early, probably my early, very early twenties. That money would have counted for a lot. It would have counted yeah, for yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah, and I still said I don't want. It. Yeah, I was like, it, it, I didn't look. We were friendly, and I and I took it with like I told her, "Are you crazy? That's wrong that you did that." But I don't want any money. But congrats, <laughs> or whatever I said. But I didn't take it well. Like I didn't like. I, I was upset that she did that. You know what I mean? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to silence my fucking Apple Watch, which I now only wear when I'm on the motorcycle, and I can't fucking I haven't hear. heard it. Yeah, a little ding going off, and yeah. I, I'm worried people at home are going to think they get it. I mean, no, gonna, it sets an atmosphere for them. Oh, all right. You understand? I don't, but I, but I like it. it. That means I don't have to do any work. But uh, sensual... Uh, okay, you want the official def? Yeah. Uh, is of, a, of an... A, of or arousing gratification of the senses and physical, especially if sexual pleasure. With that in mind, kind of got to say that 69ing is sensual. You know? No, I wouldn't agree with that. Because it's straight sexual. Sensual is the road to sexual. The, anything somebody's saying, his Urban Dictionary. All right, all right, if I go up behind you and grab your ass, is that sensual? No. Arousing but not entirely sexual, relating to sexual feelings without actually having intercourse. There you go. Yeah, but 69ing isn't actually having intercourse. I mean, but it's read the first part of it. Arousing but not entirely sexual. <laughs> right. All right, but I got to say, this guy has one sentence and he spelled two words wrong in it, so I'm not sure that I got to go by his definition. Yeah, his 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 education has nothing to do with his life experience. Yeah, but is, but if I can't trust him to spell the word realistic or something like that, like yeah, but that doesn't matter. He can, he's still conveying what that guy knows. Sensual, just put it that way. Right. <laughs> you don't know anything about him except he doesn't know how to spell. I know, and what, he kind of agrees with I, your. I know what he said. Sensual is, and that's what I think. Sensual is. What about a nice slow sixty nine ing? 
Oh, God, actually, you're grossing <laughs> me the fuck out. That's not sensual. <laughs> Although slow seems to be in the in the diagram of sensual. Yeah, but that's just that's that's because it's it's like a four, it's like a tease of you know sitting at my kitchen and talking about sensual things with you. Yeah, yeah. you're not liking it's it. Not flying with, with me too much. <laughs> it's not I'm, sensual. I'm sticking with it, but <laughs> inside I'm, I'm all my skin's crawling a little oh, bit. This is why I came. I don't know. There's a big difference here. <laughs> no, uh, you know, you know what, you know what, I, you know what's bad when someone and I, we might have talked about this too, but I, I once had someone <laughs> that that was really horrible at talking sensual. Well, I'm, I should say dirty talk, like no, dirty talk, sexual. Yeah, yeah. But what I what I'm saying is, it was it, it came across more as like corny and sensual. That's horrible. And it was it's the quickest turn off. Yeah. If, if, if you wanted to dabble with that, it's about filth. Yeah. It's, it's not about like 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 a fucking romance novel. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you start so- talking about things uh, uh, with romance novel speak. Right. I mean, lose my email address. <laughs> oh, they emailed it to you? No. no. <laughs> I just don't give out my number. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, no, right, I'm just kidding. Right. But, but, no, no, I just was saying that because I thought it was a funnier choice. Yeah. But lose my social. Right. No, but uh, my social security. But um, it was bad, dude. Yeah. Especially like if you're possibly well, about yeah, to engage. Because also for a woman to take that tact, if we're going by the traditional um, – romantic slow loving thing that you could put into dirty talk like a woman doesn't have much room there it's all about the guy laying her down and the hair flowing out and all that like what is she i wonder if there's there's definitely got to be it's a law of averages there's got to be guys out there that talk all like romance novelly oh god I, like I don't even want to like it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna, I will kiss the nape of oh, uh, I'm gonna listen uh, lay, yeah. uh, flowing uh, your locks uh, I'm gonna uh, kiss my way up from your kneecap to your, will, to your outer thigh yeah I will grab you right. firm with a firmness right. uh, 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 yeah yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah that's whatever, whatever the hell it is I would you rather like, expose your bosom and whatnot a woman go in the <laughs> other direction expose your bosoms your heaving bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I would rather a woman go in the in the opposite, like too far in the other direction than too far in a romance. I'd rather be like, I'm gonna, I'll murder like, your family. I'll put your cheese dick in a, <laughs> like a, your dick in a cheese grinder or something like that. I'd rather yeah. go in that direction than just like you know, yeah. I'm gonna introduce you to my parents and then hold your hand. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll right. take the the yeah. cheese grinder. Like, uh, you know, like exactly what you said. Like, yeah. oh, like chocolate syrup. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. Pedals, those uh, pedals, bike pedals. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blindfold you and lightly blow on your earlobes. Yeah, that like, bullshit. Oh, oh yeah, the, the blo- light blowing. Uh, Do you know how much TV there is to be watched? Do you think I got time to sit here while you blow on my goddamn earlobes? You could say Cindy Crawford in her prime, if she's yeah. like, oh, I want to lo- grasp you with a firm grasp. I might put kiss, up with that kiss for your a neck little and bit. Blow in your ear. I'd be like, listen, you know what? Yeah. You're not who I thought you were. <laughs> Speaking of I which, though, know. Cindy Crawford holding up like like yeah. gangbusters. Yeah, even looks looks. I mean, there was that photo, that untouched photo of her that got released last I year. Didn't see that, but I, she was the uh, person, bar none. Have you seen a daughter? No, I have not. Before I get into it, let me just check the age of a daughter, please. <laughs> um, this is I graduated from Alyssa Milano to Cindy Crawford, yeah. and then I then you gra- then I went. To I Pan, typed in Pan Cindy, Anderson. and Cindy Crawford's daughter comes up right away. Does she, she look like Cindy Crawford? She looks exactly like her mother. I guess that's how biology. Works. I just, uh, yeah. I mean, I can't. I don't want to get into it, like with like a sexual thing. Because how, how old is she? I, I don't know, and I don't feel yeah, she's I'll, I'll old enough. Comment on her, on her right, just attractiveness. I mean, she just looks like oh, a mom. Yeah, she looks like a very young version. Yeah, hey, she doesn't look like her face is fully matured yet. That's what I'm saying. She looks very. She looks like she needs to be protected from the lights. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say anything sexual. Maybe I'd say some sensual stuff about her. <laughs> like the way she purses her lips. Blah, right. blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what is it like for Cindy Crawford to see basically her replacement growing up? Like, Well, I think it's good. Yeah? You don't think there's anything between mothers and daughters? There's got to be, oh, right? No. Like, well, why wouldn't she have pr- nothing but pride? I'm not saying that pride isn't there, but you don't think there's a little bit like she stole all my looks? No way. No? I don't think between mother and daughter, nah. I feel maybe like women or anyone could be like that with other people if they're insecure or whatever, but I don't know about mother and daughter. Plus, Cindy Crawford is the 
probably the number one supermodel in the history of supermodels. Yeah, yeah, but that not anymore. Yeah, but uh, let her daughter achieve that. You know how hard that's going to be. There's not even. I don't even know. Is this supermodels? Why was I? I was very much aware of the stable of super. It's before the internet. You didn't, we didn't have as much information coming at us at all fucking different angles. Is it just because I remember there used to be like. 20 supermodels. And you knew them yeah. all. It was like a team. I just think it was... Now, I don't even know. I, Giselle? Is that still somebody? I don't even know. Sh- yeah, I don't know. I don't know because they, 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 they... There's no way to tell anymore. I just think that... Sports Illustrated still does the, the edition. They do. And they, they got in a lot of... They got some thing because they had the big girl on the cover this year. No, I don't know. Anything. They had a plus size model, as they say. Okay. And... uh you know, some people were celebrating it. They were saying, like, hey, about time we get some, right. you know, realistic-looking gals on the cover. Right. And then some people are like, all right, well, now, at the at the cost of political correctness, we're just promoting an unhealthy life? Like, Well, I mean, obese might be unhealthy, but bigger boned or, or, or quote-unquote plus size doesn't mean unhealthy. I, I don't I don't even remember the picture and I'm not weighing in on it one way or the other. I'm not right. stupid enough to come in on this conversation. <laughs> I'm just telling you what people said. And yeah. I guess like the argument Well what about that whole dad bod thing that was up all Yeah, but I don't I think dad bod's a joke though. You know what I mean? I don't think and also guys don't have the stigma that women have when it comes to body issues. Right. So I get the idea of being like, look, like everybody's supple. Supple. That's a big thing that has to do with sensual. I hear that word, that corny word a lot. Supple. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I have no time for it. I'm actually writing. I'm writing an essay now for um, uh, StarWars.com. They asked me to write something for them, and I it actually taps into a lot of this because it's about the scene where um, Han Solo gets frozen in the carbonite, and she, she goes, "I love you," and he's like, "I know," and then gets frozen, and you don't know whether he's going to come back. And I, and my whole point is like, that's my type of romance. I don't need hearts and flowers. Like, I need ball busting until you think I'm going to die, and then you say something nice to me. Like, I'll take that a million times. I just got no room. I'm 40. Right. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear I don't want to hear nice things anymore. Right. Like, just, just, I every once you, in a while, give me an I love you, would, call it a day. Let me ask you, not to, to, to veer too much, but what would no, you, what would you def- define supple? Can you define that? That's a tough one. Supple. Isn't it just a code word for, like, fat? No. <laughs> like I've got – like I have – like right now, I'm no. a little too supple to no, fit in my no. jeans. Supple. <laughs> like, I, no, no. like I rode my motorcycle here and it looked like a fucking I will, supple parade going by. I will tell you this. I did not think that this was the definition of supple. Oh, what do you got? Supple here says bending and moving easily and gracefully. Flexible. Oh, so I guess you could describe like a leather, leather jacket. It's a very supple leather. Okay, that's right. But right. I thought I thought it had to do with softness. So did I. Does not at all. Synonyms: limber, willowy, flexible, loose-limbed, agile, acrobatic, nimble, double-jointed. Antonyms: stiff, rigid, inflexible. So there you go. My entire mm. life I thought supple meant soft. Mm. Yeah, so did I. Then I have a very supple body if that's what it meant. Yeah, fuck, dude. Ah, so there you go. So supple. So when I was, when I was more active, I guess I was supple. Yeah, I don't know the I, right kind of supple. I wonder if anyone's ever described myself as supple. That I, like one day, oh, that guy's he's a supple dude. That dude, pretty Oof. supple. That means I was loose limb, <laughs> agile. I mean, there, there was days I would, would play hockey, and I, I, I agility is a huge part of hockey. That's a good name for a superhero, supple. Now knowing what it means. Supple man, like supple man? Supple yeah, man? you can do supple, supple man, but I like supple. Just supple? Yeah. Supple. Because you be a woman then too. Supple is a really funny word if you think about it. Supple. Yeah, sounds but if like you think supple, about it, it sounds like if you th- really think about it, the name Superman is a fucking dumb name. Super like super. It's as baseline as you can it's get. It's the, the he's super. Like, yeah. but because over the years we're just like it's Superman, dude. Right. The fucking guy's awesome. So I think supple. If you give it enough time, people will be like, "Hey, man, they're supple." Supple man. You really bend it in in a position and save the day. Well, who's that dude who who can bend all over the place? Not from the famous Plastic Man. Yeah. Yellow Brian. Plastic Man. Where's Pla- he from? Plastic Man is a DC guy. He, he wasn't is? always, but he's a DC guy. Sure, he was on the old. Uh, 
cartoons. So then, but that's not Doctor. What's his fotch from Fantastic Four? Mister Fantastic. Mister Fantastic. No, they're different. Actually, there's an interesting thing now. Huh? You got me at the comics. There's an interesting thing now. Where Plastic Man has always been kind of portrayed as a, sort of a joke character. Yeah, um, no, I thought it was like cartoony. He like, is, but he's in the DC universe, mm-hmm. and he's always been portrayed. But lately, and it started really with. Um, I think Frank Miller started it, and it's come by even very recently, um, where he he is considered one of the most dangerous people in the world, where like nobody is aware of what he's capable of, how powerful he is. He's a hero. He's a good guy, but the idea of being like it's only by the grace of God that he hasn't that that he's a good shown guy. His wrath, or- right? Because if you ever really get him to a place where you piss him off, like the guy could turn into anything. He can change colors. He, you know what I mean. He, his body is basically indestructible. Um, and what do you do with a being like that? Like he could kill everybody. Um, how does he kill you? He just bounces around on you. He could turn into a gun and shoot you. He could. He oh, could turn- he's plastic man, not like rubber man. Is there a rubber? Well, man? he's not actually plastic. That's just uh, the name. Like just- he's just malle. He could just turn into anything he wants. So he could right. turn his body into a metal gun with interchange. Inter- you would parts fe- that will fire. Yeah. I feel he would be able to. Yeah, he's turned into cars and driven around. You know, what would be the point of that? Well, he's also insane in a lot of. Dis- like a lot of uh, oh, that's things. interesting. Yeah, he's that he is. He's just an interesting character because he's one of those that is like not popular enough to have a defined set of. But growing of up, thing. didn't we have that guy that we like? Well, that's Stretch Armstrong. Is that a superhero? N- he's a toy. I think this they're they're talking about making that into a movie, no, but I don't know. Getting the original Stretch Armstrong right now that would be fucking fun. Yeah, Yellow O'Brien is pretty. I mean, uh, Plastic Man's pretty badass, man. Stretch Armstrong. Like even Superman's afraid of like plastic man. By Kenner. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh sure. In fact, in fact, this is going back a few years. This is Mark Wade's run on Justice League. This is probably over ten years ago. When they were opening the Justice League to new members, he was the only one that Batman brought in. He was like, This is the guy. Like just everybody writes really? him off as a joke, but he's the fucking guy. Well, he's the most supple of them all. That's he's why. Supple man, dude. He has Stretch Armstrong's commercial. Okay. <laughs> Oh, they, 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 so Stretch Armstrong in this commercial on YouTube looks like an 80s jock with a half shirt on. Yes. But they tout him as a superhero because in the commercial he also thwarts a bank robbery. And then they show him as a child reaching across the room to grab his bottle off the table. So what is he made of? Hold on. I, I had one of them when I was little. Oh, well, everybody it, had it. Had to, that had to be filled with toxins. Plastic, rubber, and gel. Huh. Yeah, we were born, it was introduced. He could be stretched, holy shit, from his original size, about 15 inches, to four or five feet. If a tear did develop, it could be fixed with an adhesive bandage. Information on how to repair a stretch can be found inside the instruction booklet. Original stretch Armstrong figure was conceived and developed by Bill Armasmith and was in production from 76 till 80. Is a very big collectible now. Commands high prices on secondary collectors' markets, selling for hundreds, even thousands. Finding one in mint condition is hard, naturally, because who the hell doesn't want to stretch the thing? Through wow. storage and play, the figure can become damaged and rendered useless. There are still that's like a. I won't go there. There are still original stretch Armstrongs that have survived the passing of time and are remarkably preserved through sheer luck or being stored at the correct temperature. The figure keeps best at room temperature, so thirty years later, collectors are still using stretch. Latex rubber filled with a gel corn syrup. Hmm. 67 different versions there were from across all those countries. The last two were filled with a granular solid in place of a viscous liquid found in other figures. A vacuum pump, which attached to the head of these figures, removed the air from within, which froze the toy in its stretched position. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Huh. I'd like to get a stretch Armstrong. All right, let's get one. Stop collecting shit, but yeah, probably yeah. that's where I'm at too. Speaking of shit, I brought the the list. 
of Quindustry's toys. Oh, this okay. So if, now this is the thing we talked about months and months back, where you invented things to pitch to me, a la Shark Tank. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Okay. It's been a long time. I lost the list. Found it. You found it. Took a picture on my phone, so I have it nice. forever now. I really feel going over this. There's some fucking winners in here. Really? Yeah, I feel like right, well, Industry. I, I you toys. be the judge. This is all toys? Okay, yeah. I know toys. Well, no, not all toys. Not all toys. I've seen every episode of Shark Tank. Okay. All right. I'm good here. All right. I will, I will, I will listen honestly and give my feedback. All right. Why don't, we see, why don't we do this? Yes. If if we agree on which one might be the winner out of all these, yeah. maybe we can start to think about crowdsourcing. <laughs> crowdfunding it. Well, it's harder than you think because I wanted to make that Q's Cube and I just haven't had a second. To, what like, is Q's Cube again? It's the fly in the ice cube. Okay. I remember this whole thing now. This is a, cro- <laughs> a huge crock of shit. You can't do you- that. I can do that. No, you cannot. I it's can patented. do that. It's got to be patented. It's not patented. There's no way. <laughs> All you got to do is change the bug, and it's no a utility patent, a provisional no. patent, or something that like would cover. There's no way this a, shit's putting a fake no. bug in a fake ice cube has to be patented. No way. This stuff you go to Spencer's. There's like eighty of those fucking yeah, things. Yeah, because there. those are the same people that have held the no. hold on the gag uh-huh. market since we were children. Nope. I'm telling you, Q's is Cube. Yeah, but I'm also throwing a little fucking... The Ice Cube. <laughs> I think we did this patented. right. Patented. Patent Cubes. No, it's there's just no way, dude. Ice Cube positioning. Ice Cube. I'm telling you. No. All right, but my point is, is you can't just take someone else's idea and throw a Q on it. I disagree. I want to see innovative. Innovation. Okay, well, then I'm going to take the Q ball right off the list. Oh, is, this what, is this what what you're coming? No, 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 no. That's really the ball. Le- is that basically the white ball for a pool table? But you're going to throw a cue on it? No, that's it's even worse. It's even more egregious than that. It's uh, <laughs> it's the eight ball shaking thing, <laughs> but but it has a cue on it instead of an eight, and I write the things that come up. So it's got like my own little flare on it. You understand? I, okay, so okay, so <laughs> I get that. Yeah, but I'm not going to give you that as an invention or a product that you're pitching. But it is a fun little idea for right. you to shill to your, your fans. <laughs> well, we're looking at an entire line. You have to see how everything fits in the like, line. Like I would be like, okay, like should I go to the movies tonight? Right. And then I turn it around, and it's like says sure. something like, nah, bra. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, don't forget that popcorn. You know what I mean? Or you know something. All right, all right. Don't forget your popcorn's actually not bad because it's just like, will I have sex with girl tonight? Shake. Don't forget the popcorn. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you have to – no, no. Because no. I can't guarantee that the answer – like yes, they have to be can. vague enough. Yeah, but don't forget the popcorn is a horrible example. No, son. First of all, it probably wouldn't fit on Little Pyramid. Second of all, you mm. have to – your – what's on each of those pyramid sides yeah. has to be something that can legitimately answer any yes and no question. Don't forget your popcorn is not a yes or a no. So I got to take like – like it was like don't count on it as the answer in there. But I have to put my own spin on it. Yeah, don't forget your like, popcorn is like, the shit. Like don't look good, brah. Like something like that is what you're saying? It doesn't look – outlook right. They would yeah. say like outlook not right. good. Yeah. Yeah. You would say – I don't know how much you use bra by the way. Not much but – All uh, of a sudden this is uh, – you're uh, speaking. Nah, <laughs> it's the cue ball. All right. All right. Well, okay. Put those two aside. Now we're getting. Are, yeah. are you just taking no. the letter Q? No, we are on. Is it like, is it like a Q Q MacBook? We are okay. now. We are now into holy, holy original inventions from this point on. Okay. Okay. Um, but you have to look at everyone. Remember, this is a line. You're going to go to Spencer's, and there's going to be a rack of Quindus Three's gag gifts. You know oh, what I'm so saying? These are all gags. Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Right. Speaking of which, someone just gave me something over the weekend, which is like you throw it in someone's drink and the whole drink becomes a gel. Yeah, I got that too. I wonder if that works. I wonder if I can rip that off. Q's gel? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Yeah. Here's what I think you should do. Okay. Don't just tell me them. Pitch me them. All right. That's how it is on Shark Tank. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Great. I'm going to pitch you the first one, right? right. Okay. You're going to have kids, right? Sure. Sure. Everybody, you know, you love your kids. You want to have a good relationship with the kids where you can, like, kind of joke around with them and be fun. Of course. Right? Yes. Okay. So, 
But in that, what? No, no, guys. All right. All right. So now imagine like, you know, your son, he's, you know, he's not young enough to, to really do damage, but he's old enough to like, he gets a good gag. Let's say 13, right? Sure. And uh, he's going through your papers, right? Yeah. He's going through your papers. <laughs> Okay, for like whatever. My, like my, what do you? Yeah, he need he needs to find. He needs my, to like my, my my monthly statements. Yeah, he's going through your statements. He needs to find something. Okay, or he's going through, or he's going through a, a you know a yearbook, or he's going through. You could see it's a he's lot going of going through my personal effects. Yeah, or but like you know, it, it can be a violation, but it doesn't have to be. He could also be going through a family scrapbook. Okay, right. And what? A, imagine the look on his face when he comes upon. Totally realistic looking adoption papers for him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Well, what about the kids that are adopted? Well, look, I mean, you know, I, I can't, you can't serve everyone. You're going to drop a, a joke bomb on him. Yeah. That he was adopted. That's right. But isn't, isn't that saying to people who are adopted, this sucks? When it, in, in actuality, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, dude, if you're going to fucking, I mean, if this is what we're going to do, I mean, some, not all the times being okay. adopting is great. Sometimes okay. you got to lose a adoptee parent who's just doing it for the money. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't it cost a lot of money to do it? I don't I know. know. You get money. I don't know. I have no clue. You don't get money. But I think you're missing the main point. Well, why would someone adopt a kid for the money? Yeah, don't people money? get money for taking care of other people's kids? Like the state gives you money. They're like, yo, you're going to watch these kids. Here's a few bones. What are you, you talking what about? Like a foster home? Yeah, something like that. No, you don't get money if you adopt a child, though. Well, then right. why are people adopting children? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand this. You're gonna yeah. pick up somebody else's mess. I don't, I don't understand what's right, going so on. I got it. So okay, he, right. Got it. All right. So your son, you know, he's in there, a daughter, a daughter, and like, and then on in within the adoption papers, it could also look like the parents they were adopted from were like, you know. Obama, or you know what I mean, or like, or someone rich or famous, famous. And rich, right? Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be, but like, then they're, you know, imagine the look on their face where they're like, right, like, oh my god, like I'm adopted, like, like this, oh my god, Richard Branson or George, right, Clooney, George Clooney, or this calls everything into question. Right. Cindy Crawford was my mother, right, and you're just you're just snickering away in the kitchen, knowing that that's going on. Okay, um, and then yeah, then, or you don't even have to just give it to your son. Let's say you you know your sister. You know, you make out the papers so and the slide. Adoption it's fake adoption papers, but realistic looking fake adoption papers. Okay. You know, really, really slam people with it. That's, that's, you that's know? on the, on the, on the, uh, on the pretty severe end of gags, which I, it's, sure. it's funny. Hey, well, we gotta, we gotta stand out in the market. You know what I'm if saying? You found them. Yeah. If someone did it to you and you had no idea that this existed. Yeah. Take me through that experience. Oof. All right. So I find out that Jimmy. You think they're real, man. Right. Are you? Do you it blows my world. Yeah. Do you, so do you immediately address it? At this age, yeah, I immediately address it. But as a kid, I might sit on it for a while. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. <laughs> so depending on how that kid is dealing, that's what I'm saying. You should really do it like 13 year olds or something like that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't lay that heavy trip on a nine year old. What if you don't know if they saw it or not, and then this kid is carrying it with them for five years? Well, the idea would be the knowledge. You'd, you'd put it in a place for that you know they're going to be. You know, I'm not saying put it in the book and then forget about it. Like put it inside the Nintendo slot, cartridge yeah, slot. It's just like if I mean, you clean it out the garage, you just put it in a place where where you know what's find the it. Goof thing? I, so at some point, you're going to point and laugh at your child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And this but, is who is or your, your brother? Who's your target market? Or your brother or sister? You know what I'm saying? Right. Your target market is anybody who's a ball and buster. Adults who can take a joke. Yeah. And, or adults who want their kids to be able to take a joke. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, I got to tell you, it's not without merit. I got to tell you why. Okay. It, it probably is, is very cheap to produce. Yes. And uh, your margins will be pretty high. I could sell you a pack of five of them, six bucks. Six bucks, and that probably landed a landed cost packaging and delivery for each packet. If you mass produce, you could probably produce this for about a quarter. Yeah, that's a really good margin. That's a nice margin. You're not banging anybody over the head. I will tell you, I have, uh, I purchased gag envelopes. Okay. I think I purchased, there was three of them maybe. And I bet you I spent about five bucks. And they, uh, there was all different kinds. Mm-hmm. Basically, you put your friend's address on the envelope and you mail the envelope to his house, but the envelope says what it's for. 
So the the ones I had were like adult uh, sex toy ones. Right. Okay. So you send that to your friend's house, sure. so that's like a nice big family. Right. And that, that goes comes in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's in, in the, in the vein same vein. So it's it's it's, it's kind of like they'll even be aged a little bit. You know what I mean? It's proven a little bit. Yeah. It's proven. The concept's proven. Yeah. Okay, I wonder if you can patent that, though. You probably cannot. Well, I probably can't, but that's okay. It's part of a line. You got you to remember that. You know, you're looking at the Q's Cube, the Cue Ball, and the adoption uh, papers. So is the, is the, is the brand so – take me through your brand. Is it, is it like edgier? Edgier? Yeah, it's, de- it's definitely edgier. Some of these ideas, are, they're not going to – they're not going to go over – they're not going to go over okay. like, yeah, they were a little edgier. Okay. And and I know that True is going to let me call them the Impractical Jokers. So I really have to go off, you know, our kind of, you know, <laughs> oh, this guy's, a, you know, he's on that show. He's a joker. He's got his own line of gag gifts. No, wait, don't worry. We don't have to affiliate with True yeah. whatsoever. You could do, you go on Q's things. Yeah. You want, you want in, you want my star power. Right. I mean, so, you know, so what say you adoption paper? There you go. You want me to tell uh, you? Now you're talking. <laughs> See, I like, I like that. Like with one product, I've already got you angling to come on board. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. No, no. It's what's so funny is that you're, you, you, you already said it. I add nothing. We're, we're talking about it on the same through the same channels of distribution right now. I'm like, you want my star power on board? Right. You want to talk about it on my podcast? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. This next one, I've already done. Uh, in in not exactly this way, but um, I had uh, I had an I had a, a girlfriend who was sleeping over my house, and there was a uh, there was a um, they were spraying mosquitoes, right? Outside the house in New York City. Oh, um, is that when they do like do yeah. that over? What they'll do it like in New York City on Staten Island at one in the morning. They'll they'll drive a police car will lead a van spraying uh, insecticide and spray it all over your neighborhood. I oh okay yeah and they'll the cop will be playing a recording that says stay indoors you know nobody come out and it's like you're not aware it's coming it's pretty fucking freaky because you know the lights are going I've never seen that. Yeah, the the lights are going, not the sirens, but you know the the cla- you know the lights are going. So your front window lights up, and then you hear this announcement to stay indoors. You're like, "What the fuck's going on?" Um, I seized upon that opportunity. Woke up uh, the girl I was with at the time. She was like, "What's happening?" And I said, "Holy shit! Like you're never gonna believe this, but like a, a spaceship landed in Times Square, and everybody's freaking out." And like in that, who the fuck believed that? In that window of just waking up and hearing the "Stay indoors, it's for your own safety," and the you know what I mean? There's Holy there's a brief shit. ten That's second window, stuff. you know what I mean? Where, yeah. where where it was bought. What I'm saying is, let's take that to the next level. Let's produce some DVDs that actually have like. News reports on it, okay? And with like the, you know how when they interrupt for an important thing, it's like yeah. the following is brought to you. Broadcast system. Make a DVD of that where aliens have landed, and then you're watching a movie. Does you, that not exist? I dude, I don't know. Well, I don't know. That's pretty good if you, you can get like you know Dan Rather to do it. You get some production value in that thing, right? Now you're watching a movie. Girl, you guy falls asleep. Click on that DVD player. Beep. That wakes them up. They're like, what's going on? You're like, I don't know. Then like this just in. That's like, good. you know what I mean? That's good. You're going to get some good, you know, good. Maybe, yeah. maybe make a version for the radio when you're driving. You put a CD in when they're not That's looking. Good. Yeah. And you know what you do there? You record that reaction. That goes viral. Then you start getting revenue from YouTube. Now you're fucking talking, buddy. Now, now you're seeing. Now you're seeing what I'm getting at here. It's pretty good. All right. That's pretty good. And that one I got from an idea I actually did like three, four years ago. Did you ever see that guy that was driving and his wife fell asleep? Oh, in the truck in the back? The yeah. The truck was being towed and he woke up and he's like, that truck's coming out. <laughs> and it, it's so It's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Heart attack. Yeah. I just watched something online where this kid pranked his friend and they got carjacked and they may believe they blew the friend's head off right in front of the kid. Holy they fuck. They tied him to a chair. And they, 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 the guy was in a mask, and it was all a prank. And they, and he took the mask off him. They were both tied in a chair, and he went over, shot his friend in the head. The, the friend fell over, and the, it is the worst, most uncomfortable, sad thing you ever see, the, of the kid living through the experience of thinking that happened. His face turns. Does it purple? Ever get funny, or, or is it just yeah, horrible to it watch? It doesn't get funny because then, uh. then the guy gets up and they go, We're "Just kidding, just kidding." And the kid's in such shock that he doesn't really even come down. From oh it. my god! It is. It's really sucky, actually. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's not good. Well, no, that's that's not that's, that's not what your that's not your brand. No, 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 no. Like you, yeah, the, that's not where I'm at with this. That yeah. sounds like too it, much to watch. It was actually like repulsive. A oh, bit. all right. I mean, kudos to the fucking setup, though. I mean, that's fucking elaborate. Dude, the kid was hyperventilating. He his face turned purple. He, he was screaming, and then even when he was like, oh, "It was just a joke. It was just a joke." Like, he didn't even really even comprehend it. Yeah, I would probably have a similar reaction if you got shot in the head in front of me. Yes. Like, I don't know that I'd be able to shake it all. Like, living in that reality for even 20 seconds would probably right. not be easy to shake off. Right. I don't know if I – I might be like, look, I think our friendship might be over for at least a little while. Like, yeah. if you did that to me, I would be like, that's not – Yeah, it's just not – well, my point is is that it's heart attack inducing. Yeah, I've actually – I I – Saw this was uh, at work. I saw a friend of mine fall through a roof, and and the flames like came out. It looked like a hand, and I had that moment. I mean, ten seconds later, he scrambled out of it. But I had that moment where I was like, I just watched my friend die, and it was like fucking like like that feel. Even talking about it now, right. it's like getting getting me anxiety. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I can't imagine like sitting there and watching. My friend gets shot in the head, man. Like that, that's might be too far. Right. So we won't, so that's not one of your problems. Yeah, no, but this is, you know, <laughs> this is different. Okay. Here we you go. know, so it's called the, I, I wrote Aliens Have Landed DVD and then underneath it a whole series. So I guess, I guess you could get jokey with it. Like ghosts have been discovered. My lips bleeding. Why is it? Uh, I can't see from here. That's very odd. Ghosts. Well, that's a funny news story. Ghosts are about among us. Yeah, like they discovered. Like you can really do anything, really. Right. You know, like a dog. Like 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 the scientists have have uh, bred a dog that talks. You know. I tell you what. I got an idea. You get somebody that is nationally known with credible, uh, like with Anderson credible Cooper. reputation. Anderson like Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Dan Rather. Something like that. They can make so much money mm -hmm. on doing personalized. Like so, let's say I want to do a news report mm -hmm. about how my wife's cooking sucks. <laughs> right, you know what right, I mean? right. And you write to them. There's a template. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe he does ten. Your wife's cooking sucks. You, you can't stand your in-laws. Right. Ghosts are among us. Whatever. But he'll he'll do takes with names. Right, and, right, right. And maybe with a, a specific touch where he guys to to go in and they drop in out of a, out of a two minute video. 25 seconds of it is personalized or whatever it may be. But people will pay big money for that. Mm -hmm. Like if I had, a, if I was married one day and I want like whoever my wife was, I wanted it. All of a sudden I slipped that DVD and then while, while we're hanging out, <laughs> Dan Rather comes on TV and yeah. it has the production value of like eyewitness news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty damn funny. It's pretty good. So you're seeing, you're seeing this. You're seeing the alien DVD. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that is definitely a different business model. With a lot, with some overhead costs. Sure, it's definitely some overhead costs. But once you produce that, you're good for at least maybe five years before the style goes out, the clothing and hair, and it starts looking dated. Right. That's all right, though. Uh, yeah, a little, the, the uh, again, it's not expensive. Right. You could even do it as a digital download. You don't even have to do it as a DVD. Now, now you're not even. But you're saying you produce one video. Yeah. And that's that's the alien one. Right. Oh, so you go into a studio one mm -hmm. day, you, you, and you bang them, you bang out an X amount of them, and that's it. That's right. The problem is, yeah, I mean, you just it's have just to, a silly gag. It doesn't have to hold up past the no, first minute. You know what no, I'm saying? No, not at all. I'm yeah. just saying that if, if people know about it, then right. Yeah, you know, whatever. But yeah. Well, okay. All right. This one, I feel like you're going to take umbrage with. Okay. It's not really a gag gift so much. I just thought, all right, someone's grandmother's going to die, right? <laughs> okay. Grandma's on the way out, okay? Right. I don't know why my lip is bleeding. It's so bizarre. Um, what you do is you get her to record uh, a bunch of messages, right? Oh, my fucking <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. no. It's not going where you think it's going. All right, all right. It's, not, it's not ending up horrific or anything like that. Uh, although it could easily end up horrific if you got a cool grandma that wants to do it. Then what you do is you load, you, you record it with a camera, and then you load the messages that you recorded into a crystal ball. So when grandma dies, you're like, hey, man, I got this crystal ball. It's got some messages from grandma in it. 
You know what I mean? And it's a nice way. You're like, oh, here you go. You hit play. Now you can go any direction well, you want. Some sort of a, a, a reflection or hologram. Play sure. I mean, technology is up to that point by now. I, 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 all right. So basically you're just talking about a, 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 posthum, a, a, a posthumous. Is that the, the yes. Yes. Message? Yes. A message. Yes. So and you're just putting it, inserting it into a crystal ball for the for the – yeah. Kitsch factor of it. Like if your grandma's got a good sense of humor, maybe she records a message where she's like, you know, yeah, but how I'm, you, I'm haunting your house. Yeah, but how are you mm -hmm. selling this? I don't understand. How is this part of your product line? This is to the individual, to the grandma. Are you selling the crystal ball mechanism that records yes. the voice and audio? Yeah, 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 You weren't until I just said it, right? No, no. What else would I do? <laughs> but how else would I do? I'm okay. not going to go to your grandmother's house. And, so and what you're saying is you're selling the crystal ball that has voice and and audio and, right. digi and video recording. You put in a little uh, SD card with your message and it comes up. And so are you saying then that the idea would be to go to someone who is not in the know – and be like, someone gave me a well, crystal hold on ball. Now you let's try and let's try and. Well, hold on. Now the idea is now we're spitballing because I now grandma's just one thing of it. Like I could throw a turban on you, right? And and record specific messages for someone, right? Right. And and then we could be like, oh my god, like I got this crystal ball, and and they said when you rub it too dumb, a genie will will give you a thing, and I show it to Todd, right? Right. And it says, you know, Todd. Like just just admit oh. you like sucking penis. You uh, know what I mean? Like right, stuff like that. I understand that. that. But here's here's the here's the thing. No one will. No one's going to believe that this just isn't a toy. It's just it's just. Well, you got to set it up. You got to be like I was at a yard sale and I got this crystal ball. Right. I, you're asking for a real a real leap. Of well, faith. remember it's. It, these are gag. These are, for the most they, part, gags. Gag, but I mean, for the gag to go over as intended, you need a believe someone to believe that you're basically. Right. What, what's the word? The word when you try to pull uh, a spirit. Yeah, I guess it's too uh, much to yeah. ask for someone to believe that they're looking at a real crystal ball yeah. with a real what, message. What's the word I'm looking for when you're trying to drum up the spirit? C a seance. Yeah, but you're trying to uh, channel. Channel. Is it channel? No, c not com command. Not command. You're channeling you're the spirits. To, you're, you're trying to ruffle up the. What's the <laughs> word? I I know there's a We're word. We're trying to not command. I don't know. All right. Well, this is just what happens now. My, I can't think of shit no more. I just I don't know what's happening. There must be a piece of my brain. I this is the cognitive. I don't know. Hold on one second. I gotta see why my lips not are channeling. Hold on one second. We are trying to what a conjure. Conjure. Uh, he's in the bathroom, uh, looking at his bloody lip, and I just gotta say that last idea is just a terrible idea. Very odd. There's, there's no market for that. It's all, it's off brand. What are you doing? What? My lips bleeding, and you're and you're you're, you're doing jokes. I'm not doing jokes. Laugh him up, sitting here. I'm not. Mm. You think I come in a room, I see you whispering into a mic? I, you think you think I don't yeah, know something's happening? I'm talking happening? myself. All right, so you're not too high on the crystal ball, or you see if produced cheaply enough, it could be like a fun little thing. Yeah, you know how like they have toys like a Furby or whatever the hell it is where you when you talk in and that thing spits out your voice, but you already know it's a joke. Yeah. So maybe as long as it's self aware, you're not fooling anyone with this one. No. The adoption papers, you could fool someone. The UFO landing news report, you could fool someone. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is going over on anyone. Okay, but you could still get some nice messages from grammar in it, but it might be a little. Yeah. All right. You could use it any way you see fit. If someone has that type of sense of humor, right. then they could definitely pull it up. Right. Which, by the way, still would have somewhat of the same effect. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, because if grandma does pass, and then you're pulling up audio of her speaking about passing, and right. it's real, you still kind of, that still kind of has an air of eeriness to it. I'm telling you, all I'm saying is Even if though you set it up yourself. If I had a crystal ball, my grandparents been dead a long time now, and I could press a button and a message from my grandma or grandfather came up, I would probably, I'd probably hit that. I miss my grandpa. I'd probably hit that crystal ball every day. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Well, now, 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 this, now this is a completely different <laughs> line of product. Right. Now, now you're just talking about a keepsake. Yeah, I know. A crystal ball keepsake. I know. For that matter, I mean, you could just videotape your grandfather on your phone and play that. You could do that too. Why are you going to look at him in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Swarovski? Yeah, that's why it's probably better off in the joke realm. Yeah. But if you got a, if you got a crystal ball message of your grandfather calling you with disappointment and you play for your brother from a crystal ball after he's dead, I think that has some comedic value to it. 
I agree. You have to have a grandfather who is very lax about his own mortality, <laughs> knows the end is coming, and it's like – Do you think – because right now I would do that immediately for, even for when I become a grandfather. Yeah. I'll be like, this is me telling my future son, my future self, whatever that you're doing. I would right. do it now. Do you think our opinions on that would change or do you think that's already who we are? I think that's already who we are. So you're saying that we're a shoe in to do it if, if it existed when we were old. Oh, my God, yeah. 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 I wouldn't do it on a phone with a video. But I would do it in a crystal ball. Okay. You know. Because it's it's kind of like. Yeah, it's just part of it. Right. Because the phone message, it just, it might be too real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right. Now, these last two. Now, remember, I wrote these a long time ago. So, I'm trying to work my way through this one. It says, dead cell phone receives text. What I think it is. And I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna strike this idea right away. What I think it is, what I believe it was, came out of a very real moment that my friend. I came downstairs. This is going back. This is when I live on Liberty Avenue. This is going back okay. 15 years. And I come downstairs. My Isn't friend. It funny that we both lived on Liberty Avenue. Yeah. Liberty Avenue is the block I was born on. Yeah. Mm. yeah that was the block I fucking partied hard on. I come downstairs. My friend. She's on the phone and she's sending out a text. And I was like, oh, who are you texting? And she said, I'm texting my friend Dave. She just I wrote, I text you. Uh, she just said, I just, I texted, I miss you to my friend Dave. And I was like, oh, I was like, and I didn't know her friend Dave. And she was like, no, nah, he died. I was just, I just going through a phone. I saw his number and made me sad. So I just texted him that I miss him. Even though he's dead and that number's not in service anymore. It was kind of a thing, right? Heartfelt moment. I was like, what if Dave texted back? Now, here's what I'm thinking. What if? I mean, this this I'm killing well, this idea. Is she gonna think that it's just someone with his new number? This is not a good number? idea. This is not a good idea. I'm killing this. I'm killing this now. But I think the idea was that it's such a small market because you need a dead friend, I guess. But like you get texts from your dead friend's number. I don't know. I'm gonna kill this one. This, this, uh, that, that that idea took a huge. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. It's not very well developed. You do. You just gave me a, a, mm. a completely off topic idea, though. We used to make calls at the end of these random calls. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. But I remember by memory some of my old phone numbers in my family and friends when I was little that I know are not assigned to them anymore. You think there might be cell phones? I, well, I don't know what happened to those numbers, but I right. know them in my head. They're memorized. And it would be fun to call those numbers and just – you ever do that thing or mm-hmm. hear of that thing or want to do that thing where you go like ring a bell? Like if I went to Liberty Avenue where I was born right. and knocked on that door, I'd be like, hey, I was born in this house. Right, right, I lived right. here for the first three years of my life. Mind if I look around? Yeah. Like maybe I call my old, my old numbers of old friends and relatives that I know they don't have anymore. And when they pick up, just be like, hi. This used to be like <laughs> – <laughs> this used to be my grandparents' number. Yeah, you want to try it? What's up with you guys? We'll try it. We'll try it. Well, I only have one more thing, then we'll jump to that. I'm nervous to we'll do pivot. that. We'll pivot. <laughs> we'll pivot <laughs> to that. <laughs> I'm nervous to do that. Huh. I don't know why. Why would I be nervous? I have no idea. But I just, I'm all like, I don't even want to know. Right. I don't remember any of them. Oh, actually, I do remember my grandparents in Brooklyn. I'll try it. I mean, the person's just going to be like, fuck off or whatever. It's not like... Yeah, there's no there's no investment on their end for it, but I don't know. When I had to change my number because of the fucking uh, thing, was... I put my phone number on Twitter, and and you guys kept tweeting the new one. I got a new number that whoever had the number before me was such a fucking scal low life. Oh, well, you, because you can infer from the messages? From the calls that I get and the messages that are left where it's it's all bill collection. It's all like lawyer stuff. It's oh, you all got a, you got a number that was billed. Oh, that mm-hmm. sucks. Well, you could just block it. Like okay. now I just block the number so I don't get them. But like, and then what I'll, happens when you block a number? It doesn't even come through to your phone. But what happens on the other I think line? it goes, eh, 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 eh. Like it doesn't, just doesn't go through. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, so that idea is not a good one. We agree. The dead cell no, phone. No, that's no, not a good that's one. That's terrible. Mm, I agree. The last one. Finish strong. No, it needs work. It needs work. All right, let's see. Let's it's more see. of a gag. It's more of a gag, leave around, let somebody find the type thing. But okay. I, I think the market's a little limited. But what are you going to do? But it's a brochure. 
No, I'm okay, thank you. I already know what's going on. You want me to open it for the, for the hell of it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had these fake peanuts in my house for 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. Not one person has ever opened them. Not yeah. one person. Well, one, you know, with peanuts, yeah, that comes right out. We got to give it to kids, right? I mean, not one person opened the goddamn nuts. Uh, it's still a classic. I, I once did a Secret Santa. I mean, my friends do bad Secret Santa. Can I see it? Yeah. I once did a Secret Santa where I bought this. Yeah. And I had my, had my friend Sean for Secret Santa. And he op- he's like, I know what this is. Ha ha. And he opened it. And on the snake, I just wrote, fuck you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They they go the extra yard with this. They put the fake nuts in there. I know. That's- but they don't make it appealing. It sounds like there's two nuts in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not opening this. The weight doesn't match the, the, yeah. the, the two nuts. Yeah. But it's, it's a classic. It's know, a classic. Like, you know, like... You gotta show it to the kids. What's what's insane is at one point that was a real thing that people were like, "Holy shit, that right. was real! That didn't that, that that wasn't classic yet. That got people. That scared people. Right? That that I bet you. Who knows when the first time? Right. Snake in the peanuts. <laughs> snake in the peanuts. It's a classic. Snake. In the I hope peanuts. it never goes away. Fancy. Mc- you know what's so funny? I just the first image that came up is that exact image that I have. Oh yeah, so I must be like a really. You're at the top level of of the snake and the nut. Snake nut can. Oh, a snake nut can is a practical joke. Mm-hmm. Waka waka device. Which I remember when they named us some practical jokers and said we had to keep that. I want to fucking. Throw I have up. that moment on video somewhere. You do right. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a snake. You're right. You do. A snake nut can is a practical joke device that closely resembles a can of nuts, but contains a long wire spring covered by a cloth or vinyl sheet printed like snake skin, which leaps out of the can and startles the unsuspecting victim. The idea. Uh. Oh, want to take it just a stab at when it was invented? Uh, this might be a vaudeville thing, dude. This might be way back in the twenties. What do you got? 101 years ago. Get out of 1915. here. 1915. Yeah. The item was invented by Samuel Sorensen Adams. Adams. That's, I guess, S.S. Adams Co. That's, he, he, this is the case. This is your God right here. Yeah. He's your, uh, your idol because this is the God. Oh, yeah. It's right on here. Neptune, New Jersey. Neptune. S.S. Adams Co. Yeah. There it is. Neptune. I, huh. I'll tell you nothing. When we were little, we used to go down the uh, the Jersey Shore to Belmar all the time. And yeah, to take us. We were very little, and there was a beach shop about two blocks in from the beach. Yeah, and they had a whole aisle of of, of Adams. And, oh no, sorry, was it? Yeah, so it was very popular in that area. Actually, I'm sorry. In Neptune, there was a beach shop, and it had all of that, and it was still. I mean, that's literally where it was from. Mm. Adam's wife Emily had been complaining about the jam jar. Saying that it wasn't properly closed or that it was sticky, Adams, inspired by her nagging, then invented a spring snake, a coil of wire wrapped in cloth skull, and compressed the two snake f- into a little jam jar so that it would jump out when the lid was removed. The snake jam jar then evolved into a whole array of products, including the snake peanut brittle can, the snake mint can, and the best-selling snake nut can. In the 1990s, Adam's grandson produced snake potato chips. Uh, See also whoopee cushion, Chinese finger trap, okay. joy buzzer, chewing gum bug, fake vomit, and others. Mm. So, yeah, he's like a good forefather, this guy, for me. There you go, man. Sneezing powder. Well, let me get this last one out. The bar bug in the ice cube is his, my It's friend. his? Sam and S.S. Adams went on to create many more successful novelties. The bar bug in the ice cube, the money maker, the squirting nickel, the jumping coin, and the laughing tissue. Extensive line of tricks he claimed to have devised over 600 different gags. He and jo- patented 40 of them. Boy, you don't know that that was. He, he made the joy buzzer, bro. Yeah, you don't think the Joy Buzzer and the bug on the ice cube is patented? That's top of the line. That's cream of the crop stuff. He continued to lead S.S. Adams until his death in Asbury Park, New Jersey, 1963 at the age of 84. The Q's cube is gone. That's not true. What? Give me the word patent. Yeah. How long do patents? Just put the bar bug in the ice cube patent. How long do patents last? 
The term of 20 years. So my friend, the Q's Cube, is back on. Man. But he then he re-ups after that. No? Yeah, you, but you don't know you don't know anything about this. By the way, I have I own his. I own the the Adams ice cube. I know. Okay, you know what you know what's gonna happen now? I'm gonna call up the Adams. You know what? Is the Adams company on Twitter? I mean, good luck. Hold on a second. SS Adams Company. I just saw. I have it somewhere. I just saw it. Matt? Oh, hey. He doesn't have his own website, unfortunately. I got, it. I got it, buddy. There's a book, though. There's a book about the company. Dude, break yourself. Don't, don't tell me what to do. I mean, I have to order this book, right? Yeah, I mean, if you know what's good for you and your company. I'm, I'm ordering the book. Add to cart. Purchased. Oh, wow, you have a lot of these. Yes. Are these all Adam? No. See, some of these are, are like ripoffs. Man. Yeah, well, that's what I'm looking to do. Get in the ripoff game. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Traffic via fake traffic violations. You have a you have a lot of these. Someone sent me all these. I just kept them. But I have that ice cube somewhere. <sighs> Here you go. Who do you want to get with this? The only thing is you can kind of see that it's it's not real. Big mouth toys right on it. You probably have to do that. Itch powder. I wonder if that's what that works. All right. Well, look. Also, I mean, it's for kids. It says 14 plus, but any 14 or more, that's not a real fucking coin. Yeah. How about you just glue a real coin to the floor? You know what? I, you know what some fucking wise-ass delis do in New York City? They have a plastic cover on top of the counter, and they put the quarter underneath it, and they drop your change on, on that quarter. And you go to grab it, That's and funny. you can't get that quarter. Yeah. I've never, seen, I've never heard of that. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. I've fallen for it a couple of times in a couple of different delis. All right. So the last one is, what would you do if... What would you do if I was at home, crying all alone, bedroom floor, because he's hungry, and the only way to feed him was to sleep with a man for a little bit of money, and his daddy's home, in and out of line now, in and out of town now, I ain't got a job now. For you, this is what the damn thing is for me, this is what they call life. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. So, you know what? Looking at it, I think I was a little harsh on this. I think the the gem of the idea is there. Um, because what I have here, it says webcam coughing brochure, which in my mind was like, we make a brochure for a company that's selling coffins with webcams in them so you could always look. That at, exists. Are you... I think that exists. There's no way that exists. I swear to you, I think that exists. Hold on one fucking second. I, I have heard, I 100% have heard of that before. Webcam in coffin. So you could go and watch your relatives rot? I believe so. Holy shit. Did you find it? Right away. Yeah. Well, Snopes, hold on. How to carry a coffin video, coffin prank video. Wow, seemerot.com. That can't. This can't be right. Decomposition of the human body in a casket. No, nah, somebody already let this fucking. It's on GoDaddy. All right, shit. All right, but Snopes. It's on Snopes. Yeah. Yeah. This, these people let 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 it go. All right. So my idea would be right. You you make brochures, but now I'm thinking we should really expand that into totally fake businesses, like lots of fake businesses, not just webcam. In a coffin thing. So if like... Wait, wait. Is this your last idea? Webcam yeah, coffin? No, this is... Well, no. It's a brochure for a webcam for a coffin. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Oh, well, that's, like a, like a, that's like a beat on our show. We, we could literally... I mean, that's, <laughs> we, I, I mean we, that could have fit into anywhere. We've done that. Sure. But, but like these are fake brochures. And like now, if you go to a funeral home, you put it right in like... You know, you leave it on the funeral director's desk or something like that. Or if you go to your grandmother's house, you put it on the thing there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or, or well, you know that one, that makes you want to do that again. Remember that thing we did where there was? I guess it was more of a social mixer, where Joe was tapping his ring on the glass. Yeah, yeah, it was but a singles you, mixer. You were talking about mayo a lot. Yeah, you love mayo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About mayonnaise. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I think I was crying. But um, yeah. is that the one where we gave Murray business cards? 
And he had to keep introducing We made them. fake business cards for him, right? And they hid him on yeah. his pocket or something and like that? we did another one that was a mixer, a network mixer for businesses to network. Yes. Remember? And I don't know if it aired or not, but a woman – but you made me – kept keep calling myself a pussy doctor. <laughs> You remember that? Yeah. I don't know if it ever happened, but I'm like, yeah. Hey. So I would talk to someone all professional. They'd be like, oh, I'm an, I'm, <laughs> I'm no, I'm, I'm, I'm an IT firm that specializes in blah, blah, blah. We do there, diagnostics, yeah. blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? I'd be like, oh, me, I'm a pussy doctor. <laughs> yeah. But so when Murray said he was an architect and she was an architect. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. We should do another one of those again. And you could, that's, that would fit right in there. Right. Oh, I, I, I'm a webcam service provider. All right, but what you're talking about right now is is taking my money making ideas and giving them to True TV and a practical jokers. Right. I'm not I'm not doing that. Right. They get enough money off us. So you want to sell this as a brochure so you Well, now I'm thinking a line of gag, gag brochures. brochures. Right. Come up with shitty businesses. But 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 who where is the point of entry for that? Like where am I who's You're married. You're in your 50s. Right. Oh, so you? I'm bringing home the brochure and leaving it on the table as a, as a gesture of, of a hint, hint. Yeah. You let's say you oh, want to get okay. your wife. You're like, look, like you know, let's. Why don't we start estate planning for when we're gone? Got it. You okay. know what I mean? And okay. then just here's an idea, I got and it. then just watch your wife be like, what the fuck are you even talking got about? It. You can't got do this. Got it. And you're like, no, look, check it out. Like this, this it. is what it is. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. So I didn't end on a bad note. No, it's kind of full circle because. It kind of goes back to those fake adoption papers, which right. is low overhead cost, high margins. Right. This is a little bit more than that because it's got to be like a glossy, easy nice delivery, looking easy brochure. Delivery. I think everything's from an right. online. But you could, you could, you could expand that to like cars. You know what I mean? Like a like a feature in a car. This is a bad example, but you could be like, oh man, like ejector seats and cars. And you know what I mean? Just leave the brochures for these weird business around to spark shocked. Outraged conversations right. with your, your spouses, or you know, right. they knew what they got into when they married you. They know you're you're a joker. Right. So you're 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 a line of edgier right. pranks. You could you imagine like you're, you're you're like God forbid you have a loved one dying, and you know instead of being all morose about it, you bring that brochure to them. You're like, right. you know what I mean? They're like, ah, oh, God, I'm dying, but. You still got it. You know who would be a good spokesperson for your line? Stanhope. Stanhope would be great. Stanhope is the, the most real person I've ever met. <laughs> he is. He has a take on life that yeah. I, it's hard to achieve, even if you admire it and agree. Yeah, with it. it's a, it's a, it's, he, it's he straddles the line between really caring, being cynical enough to know that it's not going to matter, and still for but, like, but the both at the same exact yeah, time. Yeah, he's got something. It's, it's an enlightenment. Yeah, it is. I'm not even shitting you. That's yeah. the definition of enlightened. Yeah, because he honestly is a genuine, caring person. Yeah, but then he also he also has this point of view that is we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who the and who the fuck cares? Yeah, nothing does it doesn't matter. Yeah, in a way, and in the best way, I I, I see him toe the line of both. For real though, yeah, it's, I know it's, it's amazing. He's, I know Stan. I yeah, I, I spent time thinking about Stan Hope and like, like how fortunate he's. He's one of those guys where I'm like, I'm really fortunate to to have this guy in my oh, life for sure. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, that's why he's such a great comedian too, because he has such a defined take on everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And he's so good. He's also so good at at communicating it, at, at, yeah. at describing it. Like his 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 point of view just pours out. It's so unique, and yeah. it pours out of every topic. You know what I mean? He's so fucking good. Yeah, he's he's, he's good. He's great. He's so smart. I know. I know. I know. See, I look at him, and I'm like, I. It's good and bad because I remind myself I can only do my me. I can't do Stanhope. Right. <laughs> that's, I'm not Stanhope. Right, right. And I'll never be able to do what Stanhope does. But that's what makes him great. But I just got, it just makes me be like, all right, well, in finding my take on things and voice, I just gotta just gotta literally be true. To, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Me, I'm. It's it always not even him, but it always amazes me when people have an opinion on everything because there's so many things I don't have an opinion on. Like what? Like so many things, dude. Like like I don't want to get into politics, but like you know, like I don't know. Like, there's so many things you could be like, make the argument for both ways, and I'd be like, ah, I see both points. I have no idea where I land on that. You know, like, and it's not just politics, but like, a lot of things, you know, like, I don't know. But it's just like, when I see people, and I see, because a lot of comics have that, you know what I mean? Right. Like, well, the best ones do. 
yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, this my, my pal of mine, Kurt Metzger. You know, he 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 runs yeah. for him. He, I feel he has that too. Yeah, he he just fucking has a. He has an opinion. My buddy Ari Shafir, yes. he has an opinion. Just on everything's filtered through that perspective, and that's why they work so well type of thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Stan Hope, I, when we became friends with him, like a part of me was just like, this is kind of what it had to be like to be friends with Hunter S. Thompson. You get that phone call at 2 in the morning. You know what uh, I mean? Right. And you have to answer. Right. You know what I mean? You have to because right. whatever's coming from Stan Hope's, he's, he's in the middle of the desert. Him and Bingo have been drinking all goddamn day. Right. Your commercial came on. You know what I mean? It was just whatever. Yeah. So he calls to say something to – like it's just an honor. I always like – it's just like such a privilege to, to know the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think what I started doing is is is, is uh, I started – Making light, like I started cueing in on the fact that I don't have an opinion. Okay, I, that's kind of your lack of opinion. Lack of, well, my lack <laughs> right. of opinion is something to right. to be talked about. So, but yeah, anyway, yeah, that's good. So you think he? Yeah, I don't know he if would, I can afford Stan Hope as. Yeah, uh, he'll do it for nothing. Yeah, you get him a bottle a bottle of Georgie, Georgie Ooh. pop off, pop off, pop off. Yeah. So you think? Okay, out of Q Cube, I'm making. I don't like your opinion on it. I'm making it. That's. You're That's gonna, the cornerstone of my whole business. Listen, you, you know what's going to happen right yeah. there? You're going to get slapped with a cease and desist. No, I'm not. You're going to get sued for back. You're going to. It's going to put the whole company under the under the. Under I don't the, think so. Cue ball. You like if I can make those things. That is patented, buddy. That's the tone. There's no way that one's not patented. You might get some like grandfather thing with the ice cube bug, the the magic eight ball that's in Toys R Us right now. But I wouldn't be an eight ball. It wouldn't be an eight ball. But when the patent is not on the name eight ball, the patent is on the utility of what it does. So the patent will say uh, a, 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 a ball, a shaped ball. Do you want to call our lawyer? Do, do you want to call him right now and get to the bottom of this? Yeah, I'm sure he wants to take this call. <laughs> I mean, we pay him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's going to – he doesn't know about eight ball uh, patents. Uh, let, me just, let me just see. We have a very serious – like – we have a high. Like, he's not. He's he's not serious. No, he's you just, firm. You just mean he's a bit. He's, he's yeah. He's he's a, he's. He, he's. This is what happened when I called him. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. This is wow. no chop shop. Yeah, he's maybe. Been there for a long time. <laughs> oh wow, maybe he doesn't. Uh, all right, I'll drop. Is that his email. cell or the office? That was his cell. <laughs> I'm not gonna call do his you office. Have a cell? Yeah, I have a I cell. Don't know if I have his cell. Yeah. Maybe I do. Let me see something. Why do you guys just exchange it? We something, yeah. We will just text bullshit sometimes. It ends in a three. Yes. Yeah, I got it. All right. Um, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So Q's cube, uh, the cue ball, pending a way to skirt around. Why don't we start with this? This is also this is also something I learned yeah. from Shark Tank. Okay. You want to have a couple of like flagship products. That put you on the map. I feel the you alien don't have ha- too many skews. I feel like the alien has landed. Series is is going to do that. I'm going to say no to that one to begin with because really? that is involved. That's a project. Whereas you can probably start sourcing the bro- fake brochures and the fake adoption papers okay. right away. You okay. can hire someone or get someone to do it on loan. That right. will start to put a prototype together. That's a proof of concept that you can maybe that you can maybe begin to patent, and then you could do a, a an inexpensive run right. of them and sell them direct to consumer okay. on a website using uh, maybe light Facebook promotion uh, ads and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't think you should roll out with too many products. So you you're saying we start with fake adoption papers, the brochures, and yeah. the Q's cube. No, I don't think you should do the Q's cube. The Q's, the Q's cube, cube. You need a factory with a mold. No, you just call China and they make it for you. You don't call China. You don't. You don't look up China. I have China. been involved get, in making action figures. You basically call China, but you need distribution channels and a factory, and you need you need. There's still going to be like that's still costly. It's way more costly. Yeah, limited run. Make a thousand. You don't think I can sell a thousand Q's cubes? I don't. What bug is going in it? Because there's no way you can put the fly in it. <laughs> I think the Q's Cube is ill. Ill I, I think it's an ill-conceived. <laughs> I, I kind of feel that's the winner, though. Why don't, you, why don't you roll out with one or two products at first? But I feel like get the f- your name out there. The fake adoption papers and the webcam coffin. I think 
They're not going to make the splash. I think the alien has landed DVD will make that splash. You know, you got fake scratch off tickets. I have sitting right there fake uh, parking tickets. Right. I got the fake envelopes. That the, so I feel like you had to do a little research first. I don't want to do. Get, I don't want to get do Danny that. to do the research. Right. And see if the patents already exist. You can, you don't just start a run of things without first finding. All right. If you're allowed to do it. All right. So step one would be to contact or have someone for hire research. Right. If you don't have the time yourself, if these things are patented or not. Well, fake brochures, you can't patent that. A fake brochure. Sure, but you might have someone that has your already patented fake adoption papers. You can't patent fake applications, I'm sure, like right. paper applications, but maybe if it drills down to be that specific, you can't. All right. You can't just go willy nilly and throw money into it and start producing it and then, then start. It. You got you to, there's, there's an order of operations here. Right. Pal. You got to do it very slowly and sensually. <laughs> Right. But you, uh, this uh, is what we, this is what you do first, and then what you do is we get a little bit. We get we get some we get some some signage. We get some brand. Well, why is it that logo. I have to do all the work, but then once we're past that, it's we. Your well, language is very telling. You have to do this, this, or this, and then we do this, this, and this. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I mean, first of all, I'm giving you counsel right now. I'm right. You I'm not trying to cut you out. I'm giving you consultation. I'm I'm, I'm dropping all sorts of things. I, listen to me. I I I don't I'm mind taking my expertise from 200 episodes of Shark Tank. And I pre I don't want you to feel I don't appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Yes, I do. Um, but uh, so I want you on board. I want you on board. So let's do it. You don't want to do it. I, I, I mean, look, it's a natural extension because people already think we're the gag guys, which right. we're not. Right. Okay? We're not prank guys. But we the we'll, show, we don't really prank each other. We, we're writing. We, we, we write the show kind yeah. of. And we, and we put ourselves in situations from A to Z. It's not just, you know, uh, you know, like you can't liken us to a like candid camera or something like that. We're not pranks. Really. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't really care how people describe us anymore. But pra- we're, you know, we, people are like, well, they went from impractical. Well, that's a, that's a nice little tagline for you right, right there. From impractical to practical. Jokes. Right. Right. Uh, now, all of a sudden, all right. now all of a sudden I'm like an advertising agent. Now, all right. Too. So we get Stan Hope to do a commercial for us. Right. I really, look, I got to launch a Q's Cube. I need it. I need it. I need it. I, no one's going to put their name on something that's been around for 101 years. I'm going to put my name on it. I might as well put my name on the Model T Ford then. I that would be interesting if you did that. The Model V Ford. Listen. All right. All right. Why don't we just get Stan Hope to do the commercial and gauge interest from that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that what you do is yeah. All you right. Go, you go right now. You go online and you get adopt. You find adoption papers. Okay. And then you make some changes because that might be <laughs> right. I don't know if you could. You Does know. anybody out there want to earn five dollars? Okay. And and just make these things for me. And I'll give you five bucks. This is we'll – that certainly is a shortcut. <laughs> I mean basically all you have to do – wait, for, hold on a second. What if I call this hold SS on, Adams company and be like – and be like, hey, man, why don't we do an imprint? Because this guy has a 101-year-old brand that is lighthearted and you're coming in with the coffin camp. Yeah, but, but – It's not going to fly. Also, he died in 1983. Yeah, but his company is still going strong. And I'm not saying we represent it as SS Adams. We do Quindustries, a subdivision he of SS Adams. He does need you. He has an, a gag empire. Yeah, he's got a you're, gag empire. You're, you're, selling your, you're selling your whole business of five beans right now. Listen <laughs> to me. First of all, I just realized something. There's nothing proprietary about right. what you're doing. Because anyone can go online and print out an adoption paper thing and fill in their kid's name. Yeah, but they don't have – but but they're not going to do that. No? No. So they're going to go to the store, yeah. use gas and time, yeah. and use paper money. No. Buy something. No. Right, right now, adoption No, you. that's not – you got you, you to have a color printer. I'm helping you right We're going to age it for them. We're going to make it look real deal. Ready? I just – okay, here you go. <laughs> adoption application, images, they're all here. Yeah, I but – literally – Click that's not the same. Right now, I wirelessly print it, and then I fill it's in my the kid's same. name. Done. You literally, if I was Mr. Wonderful, no, 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 Tank, no, no. I would tell you that. That's not true. No I would argue with you that, listen, you're going to print it out off a, a new laser printer. It's going to be shiny. You know, I am talking about aging it, making it look real. Uh, there's 
right now, I'll tell you right now, yeah. all you literally have to do, I know how to do it already. Go on YouTube right now and type in how to make paper look aged. It's a very simple process. Right, but now, no. Coffee grounds no, on it. No, no, no. Nobody's doing that. Minutes. Nobody's doing that. It takes 10 minutes, bro. Nobody's doing that. I'm telling you. Nobody's now that I'm grinding this, coffee. You can do the fake brochures because that does not exist. But why? what's stopping anyone from printing out this application – and just filling in their kid's name on because it. Because as have, as have a, no, as are embossed, as has, have, have like a foil seal on it, as a real deal. You can't print this shit off, off a fucking printer. Yeah, but no, nobody knows nothing from embossed. If, if you had adoption papers in front of me and they weren't embossed, I don't know enough to know that those aren't real. But if they were embossed, it would really fucking sell it. All right, so I take a gold sticker and I put but it. But now look what you're doing. Now you need stickers and coffee and a printer and a fucking internet connection. You need all these things as opposed to just, oh, shit, here I am at Spencer's. I'm buying shit. Oh, look, there's some fucking adoption papers. Ah, I don't know, bro. I'm not saying it's going to set the world on fire, but it's a lot easier to just do that. This is all kids. I mean, this is all pets. Hold on. For, not for dogs, for humans. Dogs. This is all for dogs for humans. There you uh, go. Application for adoption for a child. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Well, those are the list. That Those are the ideas. I, I don't know what to tell you. So far, you just like the brochure one. And you like the alien attack one, dude, but you think it's I mean, just... come on. With the embossment on it. Are you, are you Come on, dude. No, you, you don't have an embossment it, on it. They do. They uh, You can just print it out right here. View image. Check it. There's literally adoption certificates all, all online. You, wait, and you order that? No, you didn't order it. Why would you order it? I could print it for but free. But then it's not embossed. Embossed, but yes. Embossed. <laughs> yeah, dude, you, you, you're done here. You're done here. <laughs> I might have to pull out of this. <laughs> Lit, this is literally the official one from the county blank to adopt a human being. Yeah, but, that's that, it. but that's but that's a modern you one. Print you know. that? Sell it to me. What do you want to sell that doesn't, me? That doesn't look like it was made in 1976. That? You're going to open that up and you're not gonna, you're not going to believe that that was from 1976. Dude, you give me 10 minutes. I print this on my computer. I rub coffee grounds on it. I dampen it. I put it in the oven for 10 minutes. It comes out right. crinkly and ripped. Well, and I like mean, one, that sounds so easy. Second of all, you're not going to do that. Okay. Y- you watch. This is, I'm just telling you. You do that. Why would you fight this? All right. Do it. I'm giving you what I just did no, no. was save you ho- energy and If heartache. you go through the process and I see a finished thing, then then you have done that. But you're not. Right now, you're just being a negative Nancy. Well, I don't have ink in my printer. Now you got to go to the store and buy ink in the printer. Like, but what my, the fuck's going on? The point is, anyone, anyone no. on earth has instant access to a blank application and a printer. 90% of the population has it. I don't, I, but, but you're talking about coffee beans, ovens. No, because you want to weather it. But, I'm b- but by embossing. The by, by the by, let's say I adopted a kid. That yeah. that that application will be tucked away in a nice envelope in, in in my files and wouldn't be look like it came from the fucking uh, r- r- yeah. With but the whole pen. point of it is that it has to look like it was left somewhere that they can find it, not in a vault, not in a security box. Yeah, but you think a kid that's thirteen is going to be like, oh, this paper doesn't seem. I do. I think weathered. kids are smart. They're, gonna be, they're definitely not going to be like, this smells like coffee. This must be real. All right. Well, why don't we see what the listeners think? Why don't we, why don't we just we'll, – we'll... I like my headphone earmuffs that ended up coming out 20 years later after I invented them. See, if we had had this podcast back then, we could be, we'd be ahead of the game. And how about this one? I also saw it come out, and I swear to Christ, this was another one I thought of 20 years ago. I t- might have told you this. You know when you step on the pedal so the, the garbage can opens? In the yeah. Top? All right? You have that contraption on all public toilets. That's pretty good. So now, this is what I'm talking about. Wait. To get – to get the, the seat up, the ring up, not the cover, this the ring up. Yes. As opposed to just... You do never, you're never touching the seat. Yeah, but you're not going to... Uh, you're never touching the seat? Yeah, but I'm not going to touch anything because people are pissing on that that too. I'd rather piss on the seat and fuck the next you're, person. You're, the, the pedal is no different than the floor you're standing on right there. There's no difference. The pedal on the floor you're standing right in front of. Yeah, but I'll tell you why I don't think that'll work. Because you're talking about a move, an extra move that I have to make to make life better for the person after me. No, but what if you're coming in and you need the seat? You understand? What if you're on the other end of it? But how, why would you need the seat? You have to sit down. 
Well, who's I, you're not sitting on? I don't find myself in that situation. Yeah, yeah. But people do. The best toilet invention of all time is where they have an O'Hare airport where the fucking it's unbelievable. Where where the the whole toilet's covered in a ring of plastic yeah. that you hit a button and it just new new plastic. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, that's I, I remember the, the day I saw that, and my yeah. mind was blown. That's I was best. changed from that day forward. I still won't sit down on it, but no. I, I I was really appreciative of someone wherever he is. <sighs> All right, look, we've been going an hour and a half. All right. Talking about basically bullshit and nothing. Okay. I don't know how happy people are going to be we with this episode. For the with this one. We did. We went for it. We had a good time. We chatted. What are you going to do? No, but I mean, you know, this. I mean, that's what it is. We just, we yeah. just, we just haven't bullshit in so long. Yeah. It was a, it was a very uh, supple episode. We, it was we, supple. we gracefully, uh, <laughs> we gracefully bent from, from topic to topic. That's right. I like it. Br- brought it all home with that one. This wasn't a stiff. We were very relaxed. I forgot the mics were here. Yeah. Which is always one of my favorite. That's it. All right. So oh, I, there's something I want to say. Oh, you got something. No, just the business out of the way. But here's something that we've said in the past, forgot, and I want to reconfirm because I keep seeing it. Okay. If you guys would leave us a rating on iTunes, oh. that is that is basically everything. That's it. The, ra- the, the ratings and comments on iTunes, if you just leave a little comment, even if it's like five words, it takes you down. Those ratings rank us. Yeah. And the rank really holds weight with people, with advertisers, with people yeah. that would book us for other things and this and that. And that is really and we have I don't I put our audience up against any any podcast audience. I don't yeah. care. People might have way more listeners than us, but we have engaged listeners. Yes. Our our, our, our listeners are like the best. So I think that like, you know, I think that that yeah. I feel really bad really asking that. I feel like we need to be a little more consistent in delivering episodes. That is true for that ad. To make but I that mean, ass. this is sixty nine. You know, free episodes whenever we have the chance. We love doing it. Yeah, and our you know, real listeners appreciate that. I, I don't think that someone would balk at the idea of they've listened to sixty nine out or sixty nine hours of stuff mm. and wouldn't go on for two minutes and drop. True, a true. It, it would help us a lot. So. I always hear when I listen to the pod. I listen to like only like five other podcasts, and I always hear at the end, "Hey, don't forget to give us okay. a, a rating." Right. So just a reminder to give us a rating, and then check out our tour. Uh, we are doing a bus tour uh, coming up April twenty ninth to May eighth, and we're going through. Uh, <laughs> I don't, know where I don't even fucking. But know, it's dude. on the tenderloins dot com slash tour. Yeah. This ticket's still available. That is really the end of this tour. We're gonna t- hopefully tape it and make a special out of it soon. And then all new material. Where's Santiago? Oh, Santiago. Santiago sent us is the new tour. It starts in June, right? Ooh, it's it, start, it starts in June. It starts in June, and we come out of the gate friggin' swinging. We're opening up the new amphitheater in Coney Island, Brooklyn, which is like 6,000 seats. Right. Well, I think we're doing one, maybe two shows there. I don't I know. I don't know. We're also playing Foxwoods for three or four shows in that theater. That's a 4,000 seat theater. And then we're doing uh, Borgata. Right. Which is at three shows, maybe four in their bigger theater. Uh, so we're really coming out of the gate swinging. Uh, and then for that matter, Check out the com slash tour because we are testing out all of our new material at smaller venues in Brooklyn and Manhattan over the next month. Uh, and so about once a week, we have uh, two shows a night in spaces that hold between 150 to 200 people. And it's all new material and riffing. Right. And those we don't even really advertise. So you can still get tickets to those and come see us for like – I think it's like 20 bucks. Yeah. And uh, we're on stage for an hour and a half. It's even longer than the tour. Right. And it's a much more intimate thing. We talk to the audience. We really, it's really low key and cool. If you are a fan of the show, I think that you would enjoy it. So check the com slash tour for this last run of shows. Where's Larry? The new run of Santiago sent us and for all the podcasts. Give us a rating if you like. And, you know, we'll try to, uh, we'll try to be more consistent. We're going on the bus for 10 days. So that I could either that, hurt or help us. I don't know. Yeah, I think that we'll find mm-hmm. the time to do some uh, a, a nice handful of these. That'd be good. I'd like to get a couple of guests on too. So. Yeah. Anyway, not making any empty promises, but we're gonna you know do the best we can. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Great. All right. I heard
heard that Rome wasn't built in a day Then how come everyone is rushing to get ahead And if I seem to be reserved, that's just my way Your questions seem like you're interrogating me Yeah, I try Then again, I don't try I get an F for effort I get a D next time uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Here we go I heard the lemon metaphor four million times And I don't stand for lemonade, don't ask me why And would a beverage stand be a job that be desired? I- I- and where would I get the wood and should I try? Should I try? Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a 65. Yeah, I try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I might as well just. Uh huh, uh huh. The currency don't grow like leaves on trees Then how come my money comes and goes so seasonally And I wish farmers planted plants instead of thieves My friend pays a ton of green for greener groceries Yeah, she tries Then again, she don't try She gets an F for effort She'll plant a tree next time Yeah, she tries then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a D next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a C 